sometimes you're going to look at a sentence in logic and have no idea what it means, whether it will be true or false. I'm going to show you some techniques that allow you to rewrite that sentence in a way that makes it easier to understand, easier to see what it means and easier to work out whether it's going to be true or false. OK, let's take a look. everyone, welcome to Attic Philosophy. We are doing a series of videos introducing the basic concepts of logic. In the previous couple of videos, we were looking at equivalences and equivalent schemes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use those equivalent schemes to take a sentence, maybe one that's really difficult to understand, rewrite it, making it easier to understand, easier to calculate whether it's going to be true or false. If you're finding these videos useful, if they're helpful to you, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. OK, so let's have a look at how we rewrite sentences. In the previous video, I went through logical equivalence and I showed you lots of different schemes whereby one sentence is guaranteed to be equivalent to another sentence. How can we use those in logic? OK, we've already got truth tables, so why do we need to use these schemes? Well, they give us ways of transforming sentences, potentially from a way that's hard to understand into a way that's much easier to understand. So we can transform a sentence, we can rewrite it, using these schemes from a way that's difficult to a way that's much easier to understand, but so that it's guaranteed to stay equivalent. So each of the sentences along the way remains equivalent to the one we started with. So here's a quick reminder of all the equivalent schemes that we're going to be interested in. We have the commutativity rules for and and or. We've got the associativity rules for and and or. And we've got the distribution rules relating and and or together. We've got the De Morgan laws. These relate negation and conjunction and disjunction. And we've got the double negation laws. And then we have some equivalences involving arrow and double arrow. OK, so we can rewrite the arrow in terms of negation and disjunction. And we can rewrite the double arrow using the single arrow and conjunction. Let me give you a really simple example of how we can use some of these equivalent schemes to transform a sentence. Here is a sentence that we're going to rewrite, but we can apply those schemes to just one subsentence of it, transforming that part. So this will stay the same and we are going to rewrite this arrow bit using negation and disjunction. That would give us this. So I'm using this symbol here, remember, to mean is equivalent to. So this sentence is equivalent to this sentence. And then we can use the distribution rule to distribute and over or to give us this. OK, so this sentence is equivalent to this one, which is equivalent to this one. So they're all equivalent. This sentence, it's in what's called disjunctive normal form. We're going to get onto that later in the video. But we can see just by looking at it quite easily what it would take for it to be true or false. So for it to be true, either we need P true and Q false or we need both P and R true. So maybe that wasn't so easy to see with this original sentence. It's pretty easy to see with this sentence. So that's the idea behind rewriting, taking one sentence, transforming it using these equivalent schemes into something where we can quite easily see what it would take for it to be true or false. That example was pretty straightforward. But now look at this sentence here. This one is going to be an absolute pain. What on earth does it mean? I have no idea what's going on there. So let's see if we can fiddle around with it to try and make it make a bit more sense. It's got one, two, three, four primitive sentence letters in it. So it's going to have a 16 line truth table. That is going to be an absolute pain to draw out. We're probably going to make loads of mistakes. Let's see if we can fiddle around with this sentence to make it make a bit more sense without having to go via the truth table. First thing to note is it's a conjunction with one, two, three, four conjuncts. And these first two conjuncts, they are disjunctions. So within them, the order of the brackets doesn't make any difference. That's the associativity rule. So there's a commonality here, P or Q. P or Q. And the distribution rule allows us to factor out that common P or Q disjunct. And that will give us this. So we've got P or Q that we've taken out of here. 
This R comes from here, and this not R comes from here. This P or not Q comes from changing this arrow here, and this not P or S comes from eliminating this arrow here. Here we have a disjunct, 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 and again, because of associativity, those brackets don't really matter. So we could view that as P or all of this together. So this conjunct has a P, this conjunct has a P as a disjunct. So we could use the distribution rule again to factor out that commonality, the P here and the P here. That will give us this, P or all of this, and then this bit will go in here. OK, so let's just focus on this conjunct here. I haven't written that bit in there, but it should be there. One thing we can notice about this is it's a disjunction. And the second disjunct and the third disjunct are both contradictions. Q and not Q, R and not R. They can't be true because Q can't be true and false at the same time. R can't be true and false at the same time. This disjunction is true just in case one of the disjuncts is true. That one can't be true and that one can't be true. So this whole thing here is equivalent to P on its own. So we could rewrite it just like that. P on its own and then we've got this conjunct coming there. OK, so we've transformed all of this into just this and we can do even better because we have a conjunction here over a disjunction. We can apply the distribution rule one more time to give us this. And notice here, again, we've got a contradiction. It's a disjunction with a contradictory disjunct. That can't possibly be true. So we can eliminate that, giving us just P and S. All of these lines are equivalent, so this is equivalent to this horrible looking thing. All of that mess up here basically just means P is true and S is true. So there's a nice example of how rewriting can help us understand what a sentence means. This thing basically means P is true and S is true. The downside, of course, is it's not always easy to do the rewriting. Some of these steps here, I think, are a little bit complex and there's still scope for getting them wrong. So if you like the sound of this technique, I'm going to suggest you do lots and lots of practice. You go through lots and lots of examples, rewriting those sentences, particularly paying attention to the distribution rules. So there we have an illustration of how transforming a really complex looking sentence using these equivalent schemes can help us understand what it's saying, what it means, and when it would be true or false. So that's the idea behind rewriting. And we can take the idea further using what are called normal forms. It's a set way that a sentence is going to look. So we can take a sentence, we can use these equivalent schemes, we can rewrite that sentence into a set normal form. And that's going to be a set way to understand the sentence. We're going to have a look at that in the next video. We're going to look at negation normal form, we're going to look at disjunctive normal form and conjunctive normal form. OK, so I hope you join me back for that. If you're finding these videos useful, consider subscribing to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And if you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.